Hello everybody, what's up? I am sat here with my uh, Coke, caffeine free Diet Coke, sorry. Uh, and uh, I decided to go with this because it's gold. Um, because it's kind of like the one ring. And that, that actually explains a lot about my life, if I'm honest. Let's, you know, yeah, there you go. Anyway, hi chat, how are you? What's going on? How are you feeling? What's the vibe? Are you hobbying? Or are you, for some reason, watching this on the second monitor while you do chores? What's up? So, uh, I don't really know what I'm, so today, uh, as you know, I'm sure, I picked up this buckler man uh, from Salute and I wanted to paint it, uh, however, something that I wanted to try out, hence the title of this video, is, so this is a 30mm base, and it's not a 30mm uh, lipped base, like you sometimes get in, for example, uh, War Machine, or Malifaux, or all of these other things, games, it's a, it's a GW style, non-lipped, 30mm base, and that's fine, that's cool. However, I generally quite like like the cobblestone look on a on a model, on a base. I think it looks cool. Kind of grounds the miniature and a bit of reality. But you're not going to be able to buy a 30mm cobblestone base. So I was like, I wonder if I could just paint one. There you go. That's that's the thought process today. So all I've done to this model so far is um I've blacked the rim as you know that's the favorite part of any any model job uh, and then i've just put uh, space wolves gray contrast paint over the base and then i'm just going to draw a checkered pattern on it that's it hello zingbo hello tabletop inbox how's it going what is up uh stormcast annihilators i can't remember which one the annihilators are is that inspired by the fact that uh, you liked the new ones, who I also cannot remember what they're called. They're like, I want to say Reclusiarch, that's not right. The new ones that are like, they need their little human helpers with them because they're, they're lost emotionally, I guess. Or mentally, whatever. There you go. What do you all, you all think? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Stormcast this week where I didn't talk about them last week, instead of uh, Custodes, right? Because that is a pickle. Although, before we dive into that, oh, what do I need to do? Okay. So, I am painting the cobble base, but I actually also want to, hello, go for it painting. I, I also wanted to just paint the whole model. So, I'm gonna do my standard, lazy, I'm not copying this, um, because I can't do those, those pants. I call them pants. Ah, oh, the Americans have got me. Damn. Uh, those pantaloons. Oh my god, that's why the Americans call them pants, because it's pantaloons. That actually just hit me. That's pretty cringe. Okay. Uh, these trousers, these leggings, there you go. Uh, there's no way I'm doing that little thing. I'm gonna do my standard Seraphim CPR kind of, yo know, khaki thing. That works for me. Uh, that's it. So all the cloth is going to be seraphim sepia. However, I envision that to do the cobblestones, I'm going to need a few goes. I don't have a regular black paint. Oops. That's fine. Doesn't matter. I'm not a good enough painter for it to make any difference at all. I'm going to use Black Legion. There you go. Uh, the original plan had been... I was thinking about just using a um, a pen, but I don't think a pen will actually get in there. The super chunky hammer dudes. Oh, are they the... Oh, but not the paladins. Hmm, okay. Right. I'm using my thinnest brush, which is the Citadel starter brush. There you go. What more do you need? This is top-notch quality painting right here, guys. This is this is what it's all about. Right, let's do it. So, 
Um, on this little card, you see it's got just a very big, almost marble base like thing. I think I'm going to go more cobblestones. But I don't know what that really means. This is really just pure guesswork. Um, I don't know how this is going to look. I've never done this before. You're seeing this. Do not try this stunt at home. You will ruin the model. Let me be the full guy. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Uh, so I don't want to give myself too much work. I am, of course, a lazy painter. So... Let's do, uh, let's just see how it vibes. I'm gonna drop out. Okay. So I should have just dropped and then be back. Yeah. Right, I go back in. Okay. There we go. I should now be back. Uh, what happened there was, obviously, I used my um, phone. Yeah, I used my phone as my top-down camera because it connects to OBS Studio really well. Hello, Major Tom. And when I plug it in, my laptop immediately starts using its data. Um, don't know why. That's just life. Uh, and so I just, and so normally I have to airplane mode it first. Uh, but there you go, I just swapped it over. Hello to Adolfo and hello to Kill Team Ken. The only man out there who has Kill Team in the name. Frankly, more Kill Team, more a Kill Team than me. Especially these days. Well, that's not fair. I still play Kill Team. Sometimes. The last Scout Squad. How are you feeling about the upcoming... Um, tournament. I actually genuinely wish that I could be at uh, this tournament. Even if I wasn't playing, it feels like it would be really good fun to like cover. Um, because obviously you've got uh, Cyrac and you've got Ryan from Tony Point Tactics there. And I'd be like, you know what? That seems pretty fun. But yeah. A shame. A shame. Shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? It's going to be a bit... Yeah. I'm not sad I'm not playing in it. Let's be clear on that. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like it's going to be mental. And of course, you all know that I regularly, regularly uh, beat Ryan because uh, it's been on my channel. But honestly, every every, every time, both times, in fact, um, total, I told him. I said, look, mate, if you want to be on the channel, you've got to throw this game. So I haven't really beaten him. I've just, uh, you know. Coerced him, blackmailed him into taking the taking the L, diving. So, good thing I'm not having to put that to the test. <clears throat> you know what? Here's the thing. This is why nobody should pay attention to my hobby because I've done this here, and I'm like, that's good enough actually. But yeah, that's pretty much a cobble street. Works for me. Uh, so clearly, don't pay attention to my hobby. Pro tip number one. Uh, we're gonna need some, we, we want one of these have a nice little crack, don't we? Love a good crack. Uh, so we'll do a little... 
Little line there. There you go. That's like... I'm an artist, if I'm honest. I don't want to big myself up too much, but... Quite the artist. There you go. We'll do another one at the back, maybe. Uh, around this shattered looking thing. <clears throat> um, I feel like it doesn't need to be said, but I'm going to say it just in case I have never tried to do this before. So I don't really know what's going on. Smashed it. Oh, no, I haven't. <clears throat> Minus one arm due to a one month old on arm. Ugh. If only there were things that you could do one handed. You know? Terrible for you, mate. Terrible. This is artwork, guys. Oh. Van Gogh ain't got nothing on me. This is pure impressionism right here. Okay, I'm done. Right, <laughs> bored of that. Uh, yeah, okay. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Why not? Right. <coughs> and I've forgotten my my uh, my water. So I just whatever. I've got Coke. That's more viscous anyway. Right. Hello, Andre Fodstad. How's it going? Cleaning up the kitchen. Very nice, sir. Very nice. Right. Okay. Step one done. That all now needs to dry. Uh, let's do the Seraphim Sepia, a.k.a. the best part of literally any project. For me, personally, because I just like Seraphim Sepia. <clears throat> Your inner Hulk Hogan. I don't know where that came across, but good. I'm into it, I think. Oh, he's taken a bit of a turn, actually, hasn't he? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. Hmm. So, I don't really have much to talk about uh, this week. Um, obviously, I'm excited for upcoming stuff. Uh, but I, I did a video on them, so I kind of don't have anything else to add. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I, I talked about it. Um, and there's no new information since I did that video yesterday. Oh, I suppose... Me, me, and me, and what I always get up to is I have bought more stuff. Um, I bought from Element Games this time because I know that they are pretty reliable when it comes to next day delivery. If you buy before a certain time, uh, and I picked up the Middle Earth strategy battle game, Forces of. Lord of the Rings and Forces of the Hobbit because I was getting really annoyed at not knowing what any army did. So, I did that. I'm still not particularly sold on it as a system, but if, if you don't have that, you really can't do much. So, there you go, I guess. That is a decision I, I chose to make. You know, it's just two books, I guess, which is very, very annoying that I had to buy them when I didn't know that was a thing. Can't lie. But whatever. It's fine. I thought, I don't know why I thought this, this just isn't how Games Workshop works. But I thought, oh, great. I've bought the core rulebook. I can now play the game. That's not what GW does. 
However, going into uh, Mespiga almost without thinking about it, that, that is just how the game should be, isn't it? It's a pure money grab to separate that out from the core rules. Um, and that's actually very frustrating. And it's good, it's good that I get frustrated at times uh, in that sort of sense, because I often, I think I give GW a lot of passes about their business practices because I'm used to them. But yeah, absolute bullshit. <clears throat> How would you play Scouts onto Felgor? <sighs> Concede and have a good, have a drink. Um, <clears throat> so, Felgor, they're going to be all, uh, they're going to be all, all concealed, hold of turn one, nothing you can do about that, um, honestly, you don't even need vantage points, they're not going to give you a shot, because all terrain is very heavy these days, so your only option is to go for some sort of turn one kill with uh, your scouting option, your forward scouting, I guess. But do you want to waste that? Like, or not waste it, but... I mean, all you could do is just hold off for turn two, can't you? There's not really anything to do. Is there? What do you do? I don't even know. I, like, I genuinely don't know. Okay, let's think about it. I'm Felgor. Easy game. Easy game, easy life. That's the mindset I'm in. I'm going into scouts. What am I afraid about? Okay. So the only thing I'm even remotely scared about is going to be... If you get to get a shot off on me from Vantage, because there isn't heavy cover. So, step one, identify those objectives. Objective markers that don't have heavy cover guarding them. That, and like, and make sure you can get a model to cover that if the opponent slips up and places there. And then, Turn two onwards, you're just going to have to have a really bad trade-off. Because even your shotguns aren't killing them. I, I don't know what you do, actually. You don't have any, like, uh, nerfs to, like, slow them down. Or, like, to uh, you, you're not beating them in combat, and you're not going to shoot them. Because if you do shoot them, they, they, you know, in your turn, they just frenzy. And then they get to kill you. And they outnumber you by one model. I, I genuinely think, and chat, the kill team is out there. Let me know if I'm wrong here. I think that is an unwinnable battle between, between two skill players. Uh, two players of equal skill. And... Yeah. I don't think Scout win that matchup unless you get extreme amounts of luck uh, allowing you to... Uh, ba basically, if the enemy fluffs his rolls all the time and you ace yours, you'll win. But that's true with anything. I don't think you win that at all. Albert, hello, thank you. Hey, I discovered your channel via your What Is War Machine video. It was excellent. Do you plan to make any more of those types of videos for other games? Uh, yes, actually, I do. So firstly, I intend to do more War Machine videos. Um, I have just, yesterday, finished writing a full three-part How To Play War Machine. It starts with a, a battle report, essentially a live-fire training exercise, which is exhaustive. Um, and it kind of shows you the fun of the game. Then... Two, video two is the basics, and then video three is the advanced, uh, which is uh, going to take me ages to film. Uh, but, it, uh, but at least I've done the script, so that's cool. Um, and yes, I do intend to do a whole load of what is X in 2024, so I've already written a more time script. Uh, that's coming up. Um, 
I will probably also do what is a strategy battle game, and I'll probably also do what is Necromunda, uh, what is X-Wing. Yeah, those are the ones I intend on doing. Maybe not Necromunda. Maybe not Necromunda. Um, maybe, but maybe not. Um, it, I would have to play more Necromunda before I could really do that. But I could definitely do X-Wing, Mespiga, and Mordheim, because Mordheim's already done. But yeah, that, that, that's quite a fun little video type thing to make. So I do intend to do more of that. <clears throat> Pure drop and drink meta. Yeah. Horrifying. Horrifying. In a way, good thing I'm not there. Because I'll get smashed. Uh, oh, I guess I can do the flesh. Can I? What do I need? Always need snake bite leather. That's a go-to for every single model. Garagax sewer. No, don't need that. Okay. Fire slayer flesh. It is, sirs. <clears throat> I don't mind a fire slayer flesh. Can't complain. Of course, I'm colorblind, so it's all just black. I mean brown. Hmm. I now see that I missed something that should have been sepia. So, whoops. A classic. How do you get on with the black talons? Oh, uh, they're done. Yeah, I finished those. Um, oh no, the only thing I have to do next with them is uh, do the final Blood for the Blood God spray. Um, which I will do at some point. But as that's literally a few, a couple of minutes, just, uh, you know, it's not, I'm not overly fussed about doing that. Uh, yeah. I'll do it at some point though. But yes, ultimately, nice models. Can't complain. Can't complain. <clears throat> have you played Warcrow? Yes, I have. Um, I played, uh, I, I got a demo of it uh, at Salute, which happened on Saturday. Uh, and that was where I got this model. So yeah, this is the the little card, the Buckler Man, demo event miniature, and uh, yeah. I did a video talking about it. The general gist is, maybe, there you go. Um, yes, until we know more, it's really hard to say much. I think that the core mechanics, if you're coming over from, let's say, Warhammer, are, are pretty much what you'd expect. It's going to be very easy to just start playing that game at a core basic level. Once you know how to read a data card, it's it's very uh, intuitive uh, to to uh, to someone that already plays Warhammer, right? A, a lot of shared things, except you're rolling uh, d8s or d10s. I'm not sure. I think d8s, um, and. You're not always just looking for hits. Sometimes you'll look, you can do other things with worse results. A hit's always good, though. Hit's always a hit. You're, you're not complaining about a hit. But if you roll suboptimally, you can do other things with other symbols on those dice. Otherwise, the core is just minor variation on, let's say, Warhammer. Um... Except I have no idea how magic works. Uh, they are yet to show us how magic works in the game. So, potentially, they kind of talk about it like it's a really big thing, like that's going to change everything. But until we see it, we don't know. So we can only speculate. Hmm. What are we doing here? So 
So, uh, I know full well that this cobble base I've done is not good enough, okay? Like, like that. But I actually really like it. Like, to the point, so I, I had a plan, I was going to do a lot more, uh, and, I, and I, I still might, I'm going to use um, non oil in a larger pattern around uh, all of the black lines there to give it a, an impression of uh, depth. Uh, and then I was going to use, perhaps if I really feel like it, in one corner, um, like a, just a little highlight um, of white, just a teeny tiny bit. But I kind of like it as is. And knowing me and my patience levels, I'll probably stick with that. Is it good? No. Does that matter? No. It's all about what makes you happy. But this is very much where we get onto these weird things of personal taste. Because I look at this and I, I yes, I agree, this is not looking like realistic, uh, you know, a realistic depic depiction of cobbled streets. But the weird jarring cartooniness of it, to me, almost looks better. Which is fun for me. Maybe not for you guys. Hello, Jack. Evening. How's it going? Hmm, what's this doing? Uh, do I want that? I guess that'll be black. Hmm, I am still undecided what to do for the armor. I could just do... Silver? Or, sorry, so I could do black. Because in the lore of Warcrow, this is the... A, this army is called the Black Legion. Um, and, you know, as we see on the card, they are indeed coloured black uh, with the armour, then with gold trim. So that's kind of the base, the base way to go. I'm not sure if I want to do that. Because... Let's think. I think... I'm gonna do something safer for me, my quick painting, and do silver. Uh, as in standard traditional. knightly armor, I suppose. Am I? Either way, I have to put the black on the armor. I'll do that and then figure it out after that. <clears throat> Maybe the black lines are a bit harsh given that the base color. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, if the black lines were lighter, it would look less cartoony, uh, which would make sense. If they were more dark brown and thinner, but I think the problem is I, I generally like cartoony look things, and this is almost like I've done cell shaded um, cobblestones. But... Obviously, uh, the rest of the middle, the model isn't cell shaded, which is a mistake. I should definitely do that. <clears throat> Since you've delved into Warcrow, how would you say it's different from other fancy war games like Aesthetics and Playstyle? So obviously, I've I've just had a very quick, basic game. Um, That is a Coke, that is a Diet Coke, no caffeine. And as I explained at the beginning, the reason I've gone with a Diet Coke, no caffeine is because it's gold. And that reminds me of the One Ring. There you go. Um, so obviously I, I don't know everything about Warcrow. Um, it seems super similar to other things. A lot of Corvus Belli's marketing has been aimed at Infinity players. One thing they keep pushing is like, oh, it's all about, you know, like it's movement and like positioning is really important now. 
And I was like, oh, interesting. I, I wonder what they're doing with that. Like, are they going to allow us to like push each other's models? That's always a mechanic that I find really interesting. And I'm looking at it, it's like, oh no, they mean they're using objective markers. It's like, oh, okay. I mean, every game uses that. That's that's normal. That's not a, that's not a selling point. Um, so you know, it, it's interesting to see what what they're doing and how they're talking about it. Um, again, the reason I so I don't know if. Obviously, I, I, don't, I don't know the full rule set. I don't know if it's going to be a good game, um, if it's going to be a game that I actually want to play and, like, go through the hassle of finding other players for it, local to me, or if I'm just going to like the models um, and collecting them because they look like generic fantasy models, which I do not say in a negative way at all. I like generic fantasy. Generic fantasy or generic sci-fi with a slight twist is exactly what I like. So me saying Warcrow seems generic is a positive thing. Uh, you know, which I understand isn't an answer most people would probably like. They probably want everything to be very distinctive. And of course there are things that are going to be distinctive about it, but they're generic with a twist. And it's whether or not you like the twist that defines whether or not you will like it. For example, I like War Machine and the Iron Kingdoms thereof um, and a lot of it is generic fantasy with a twist and I just happen to like the twist but I still 100% would say it's generic fantasy first and I like the twist converting legionnaires into the new night lords that's the way to do it although night nightmares out now right it would have released Has it released last weekend or is it next weekend? It must be last weekend, right? As in two days ago. Yeah? Yeah. You're lo Are you not done with the exaction squad yet? I feel like every time I've looked at them, they're, they're just complete, aren't they? Where is my Black Legion? There you go. Oh, that's amusing, yeah. Contrast Black Legion. And I'm painting a Black Legion model. For a different game, yes. But it's still a Black Legion model. I'm just saying. Right. <clears throat> oh, I was meant to do the boots. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. I did not go into this model with a plan. Let me tell you that right now. Um, I'll leave the boots. I don't know what colour I want the boots to be. I'll do the armour black, because then it can either remain black, or I can turn it into silver or gold. Easy. There you go. That's what we're doing. Decided. Two subjugators left. Need those melee beat sticks to deal with Felgor. Uh, I assume the subjugators are uh, the melee dudes, yeah. I mean, they're mandatory, pretty much, aren't they? I, I would probably argue. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to do this with this brush. Oh, I really don't want to change brush just to do a small bit. You know it's bad, but I'm just like, yeah, I don't really want to change the brush size to, to do that. So then if I... Actually cover it in black. On the nice clean khakis. Gosh. <clears throat> Nightmare went on pre-order at the same time as the new Warcry box? Yes. Oh yeah, of course it's the 20th. Yes, 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 yes. Because I was excited for the Lumineth, but because I'm away on the 20th, I decided to not pre-order it. 
because what's the point if I'm not going to actually be able to play with it when it turns up? Sorry, I mean seriously engage in the hobby with it uh, because I'm an adult. So I'll just wait to see if it's still in stock when I want to buy it. Black Lean Contrast is great. Yeah, that's true. Factually correct, sir. Factually correct. Yeah. Uh, this is a, you know, a model with quite a lot of detail to it, which is, I suppose, a good thing. But it does, of course, mean a lot more room for error. Maybe I need to be using smaller brushes in general. Not that I like to talk hobby, but every time I go and look at a hobby channel now, uh, sorry, that's a lie. I don't look, I literally don't look at hobby channels. Um, it will pop up on my feed, like on Instagram or Facebook or something. Uh, the, these hobbyists who do obviously amazing work, uh, true artists. And it seems to be the done thing now where they get a teeny tiny brush and they just do like lots and lots of little teeny tiny strokes. That's just a, that's a modern that like that's that's a new thing, isn't it? That's just the in thing to do at the moment, right? Adding like this huge amounts of texture on an otherwise flat surface, or am I just not really? Have I just never paid attention before? And like, no, everybody that has been doing that for years. Legit question there. Because I look at that and I'm like, oh no thanks, I'm out. But, you know, I mean, you'd expect me to be out. I'm using all contrast all the time, right? It is what it is. It is what it is. Oh, what's even happening here? Okay. All right. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, I don't really have much to talk about, and I realise now I've made a mistake by not thinking about what to talk about uh, coming into this. You know what it is? I thought, oh, I'm going to paint a hobby thing, a cobblestone, and that's why I'm having... That's the excuse. That's the conceit for tonight's stream. No, mistake. Mistake. There always has to be a thing to talk about. I'm not against doing battle reports live as well. Um, but obviously that involves roping other people into this... This thing. I might as well while I still have this all set up. Because I don't know if I'm setting it up again once I move. So we'll think about that actually. Uh, several of the people that would be invited to be the opponent are in the chat. So that's kind of on them. It's kind of on them. I guess my next channel trip thing, I've got, I've kind of got two options. I might consider going to Freak Wars in Spain because that's like a big thing. Uh, which is like a convention, so I could hop in to see what Corvus Belly are doing with Warcrow, but also check out the Kill Team Tournament. That might be fun. Um, at some point, I need to go up to Nottingham, I think. I, I think that might be fun to go up and... Um, See if I can have a bit of a, not a tour really, but check out the Mantic HQ, uh, which I've never been to before. Uh, and see if they give me a, uh, a, a gameplay demo up there of Halo Flashpoint. 
Which, uh, to clarify, I believe they will. Uh, it's not like, see if they will, you know, see if I can trick them into doing that for me. They'd be up for it, it's just, uh, Nottingham's a bit of a, bit of a trek. Uh, for me personally. And, yeah. Really, that would need to be timed with... When is good for them in the news cycle? Because right, if I were to go right now, well, we've already seen a gameplay demo. You know? I mean, not on my channel, but... If you know how Dead Zone works, you know how this game works, so what else is there to see, and, and all this stuff. And if you look at other channels, which obviously you should, um, we've also already seen a gameplay demo at Adepticon. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, because if it wasn't just straight up Dead Zone, then it would be kind of like, well, there's still, you know, there's still nuances out there. But because we know Dead Zone, there's so much knowledge already built into the community that are interested in it. So it's a little bit of a weird one. A little bit of a weird one. Like, we don't even have to think about, oh, I wonder what this keyword means. No. We know. We know. Is what it is. So, uh, talking about real world politics. This actually isn't going to go the way that you think it's going to go. I'm not going to talk about female custodes. Because it's such a non-issue. Who cares? Uh, something that I've really enjoyed the last few days. Uh, this is for your own information so that you can kind of catalogue who I am as a person. Uh, and judge me for it, is um, I've been watching the politics of Star Wars. Yeah, and I, I find it fascinating. Like, I re obviously you can make a bad politics in Star Wars movie uh, video, 100%. Uh, in fact, I watched one just earlier today. I was like... This isn't nearly as good as the other ones I watched, you know? But, like, I'm really enjoying it. And I don't really know why. I don't know what that says about me. Um, it's clearly an issue. Like, but yeah, I really enjoy it. To the point that I, you know, well, I don't want to talk about Star Wars politics. Because it's been done. It's been perfected. It's aced. Uh, but I, it's a type of video and content that I aspire to making, odd as that might sound. Um, yeah. There you go. Feel free to judge me, that's fair. I judge myself, so. It's always nice to try and be able to flex those uh, analytical muscles a bit. So maybe I need to do a bit more uh, political, uh, fantasy political debating. How are they? Gosh, well, as, as chat is absolutely pumping tonight, uh, maybe I will have to talk about female custodes because uh, I've got nothing else to say. Yeah. It's good. Good, can't complain. Uh, I actually don't want to, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but I will talk about uh, the fallout of it in regards to other content creators I've seen. Because it's quite interesting, I think. Um, 
So I follow a few of these content creators on Twitter, etc. Not that I use Twitter, but every now and again when I'm bored, I will open it up. It's not a regular check for me, but I do. And it's definitely interesting to, to have some relatively, you know, they, they do a big drama video. Like, oh my God, female custodians, can you believe it? This is the first time, oh my God. And then not kind of say, you know, and then come back and just get slated for, for the video. And it's kind of like, and then they're annoyed that they're, they're like, oh, guys, you shouldn't say all these things about killing trans people in my comments. And it's like, yeah, but you didn't really say it was, you know, it's kind of the community you fostered. And they just seem so absolutely shocked that people would say this. I was like, hmm, do these people not think? I mean, you know, I like to think that they're genuinely naive to the idea that such hate exists, which if they are, is awesome. But yeah, it's like, have you not paid attention to the world? You need to make statements, my man. In the video, in Twitter doesn't count. Right. Zingbo, proving the chat is installed. Thank you. The people raging about female custodians mostly seem to be practicing their outrage sound bites for if slash when to female. It has felt that way for me. Ugh, sorry, I really haven't watched anything. Have I? I haven't watched any videos talking about it. No, because I don't have time for that energy in my life. I have seen thumbnails and titles of what others have said. Um, so that's, that's kind of enough. I'm okay with that level of research. Uh, and I've seen some Twitter threads about what people have said. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm all for it. Good change, good change, sorry. Firstly, I don't care. Step one. Not fussed either way. Um, however, oh, I also don't care about female space marines at all. So, you know, that's a thing. Oh, Eckhart coming in. With the save. I'm now going to talk about Star Wars politics. Uh, for the next hour. Um, I don't care. That Custodia is a female. But you know what? If you really want to have male. And female. Fa exclusive factions. Space Marines can be male. Sisters of Adam can be female. And uh, everything else can be mixed. And I like that they made Custodes female. Because Custodes are better and stronger than Space Marines. So that's a pretty definitive stance. Saying that, yep, women are just as good as men. And we're done. No need to continue that, that conversation. You know? Now, obviously, this is all kind of down to the fact that I have absolutely zero care for the law of Warhammer. So, I know some people say, oh, you can't change the law. But if the law's not good or comes from a bad place, you should probably change it, to be honest. It's my hot take. And there's no actual, like, reason 
that women can't be space marines. They just decided it. They're literally called transhuman. That means they're not human. The taste of Coke versus Pepsi, good question. That's really, that's where we are. I like gold in a very gold member style way there, you know. However, and as mentioned, gold reminds me of the one ring at the moment as I'm poking my way through some uh, Mespiga rules. <clears throat> I think Pepsi tastes better, if I'm honest. Like, Pepsi Max is the superior taste. But it's not gold. So... If in my head I can align the idea that I am attaching myself closer to the one ring whilst I drink this decaffeinated Diet Coke, I'll do that. I'll do that. That works for me. That's, a, that's all I need. That's all I need. I'm insane. I'm insane. There you go. <clears throat> Star Wars politics. Well, that's an interesting one, because obviously it's been very clearly stated by Mr. Lucas that Star Wars was, uh, you know, an allegory. Is allegory the right word? Maybe. I don't know what words mean. Uh, an allegory for uh, the Vietnam War, where the Empire was America. And uh, the rebels were Vietnam. Cool. And if you look at a lot of Star Wars, obviously huge amounts of fascist, uh, not just iconography and, and such, but like just outright that is how the, the Empire rules, right? Uh, it's in the text. This ain't no subtext. You know, this is... Very, very clear. And so that's quite interesting. And uh, one of the things that uh, Star Wars politics goes into, specifically the Empire, sorry, is something called um, high humanism, which is very literal racism. Um, the discussion of humans are better than the alien races. Uh, and sure enough, uh, in, you know, probably no longer canon anymore, uh, but in the expanded universe stuff, it, it's all there. The Empire does mistreat alien races and view them as non-sentient. Uh, because, of course, if something isn't sentient, then you don't have to afford it uh, sentient rights, I suppose it would be called. Um, and as soon as you start talking about that, it's impossible to not draw real-world parallels. Right. However, for me personally, I can still totally enjoy. Hello, Chimerix Project. Obviously, lovely Kill Team content from Chimerix there. You should definitely go check them out. Them out, sorry. Uh, you know, faux show. Actually makes Kill Team content unlike me. So, definitely. <clears throat> We've run out of music. Oh dear. There you go. Um, however, I can enjoy the Star Wars politics, which is even like so clearly mapped to real world stuff. Um, and and ignore that it's mapped over and just enjoy it for what it is, as a discussion in a made up world. Uh, very easily, which which is good. Because I think that it's it's important for these large, huge fantasy worlds and sci-fi worlds, etc. to have their own capability to talk about their own politics. Because, dumb as it sounds, these huge IPs, they have to have their own real world or their own in-world politics, right? They need to be there, otherwise the world literally doesn't make sense. And everything at some point is, you know, a decision made in, in such regards. And um, it's good to be able to divorce 
what's going on there, even though it so can be so clearly mapped over to real world issues from the real world. Because if I didn't do that, I probably wouldn't enjoy Star Wars politics. But as I watch the Star Wars politics videos, legit, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, yes, good. This is, this is what I'm into. I, I like to think, oh, the Twi'leks. Yes, yes, uh, yes. High humanism. Interesting, interesting. Uh, and then, of course, that leads into, they refer to not aliens, but humans versus sentience, which actually leads into Solo, where I thought it was just a dumb thing, you know, like the droid that wants liberation for droids. But that leads directly into a very common cyberpunk-based question of um, what is sentience, you know? That's where my mind is at. Just totes into that all day about random fantasy and sci-fi stuff. And do I think about the reality of that compared to, of, you know, Star Wars politics? Real world politics? Nah, I don't care. Do not care at all. I might be insane. Sorry. Um, Andy equals Isildur. Isildur. Oh, Hugo Weaving's an absolute chad, isn't he? He had a really strong, like, five years between The Matrix and Lord of the Rings. Crazy that he then just went away. You know? Crazy. <clears throat> Making, hold on. I missed this, sorry. Making Angmar Army ATM and all the ring race. Not played yet. Interesting. What got you into Mespiga right now? Because I'm into it because my friend has decided it's the thing he's gonna obsess over. And I'm not, I don't like the models and I'm unsure about the mechanics at the moment. But you know, so like, but he wants to play it. It's all he wants to play, really. So I'm, I'm vaguely humouring him, but also it's enjoyable for me to try something else, you know. Um, but why you, Eckhart? Uh, Pepsi Max is the best. Dark Coke. Uh, I agree, Pepsi Max is probably best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coke Zero for me. Nice. Chimerics, Wave. Good. Adepticon is being moved to Milwaukee next year, is it? Um... Beer and cheese sounds pretty amazing, not gonna lie. No beer for me. I'm not teetotal, I just don't drink. Or, yeah. I don't know the definition of teetotal, maybe. I've never been to Milwaukee. Tell me more about Milwaukee. Am I even pronouncing it correctly? Maybe it should be pronounced in the German that it clearly should be, which is Milwaukee, Milwauk, I don't know. Um, guy's speech in The Force Awakens is super fascist in setting tone and content. Guys? I assume you mean like the guy, yeah, like, okay, Hux. Oh yeah, I mean, yes. It's not in any way hidden, you understand? Like, yes, 100,000%. It is just straight up fascism, yes. It's not hidden, it's not subtext, it's in the text. Um, and obviously, as we all know, even from the original trilogy, they've been using iconography from a certain period in time, from the Germans. Um, but, you know, that, that's not hidden at all. Uh, but... Because it's not, I'm, I'm quite happy to ignore that it is clearly real and just take it for what it is. And that, I get way more enjoyment that way. I've been spreading out, definitely feels worth it for us to expand. What are you spreading out to, Comerics? What else is tickling that pickle, so to speak? Joshua Hill, the man. Uh, or not man, I apologise, the chap. Finally, a man who knows how to hobby. I am a sponge. Saturate me in your knowledge. J for me on the battle. Done, been unsubscribed. F that guy, Glass, you a hobby god. So, <clears throat> right. 
<laughs> okay. I I can accept that you you want my level of hobby expertise, which is bottom. Uh but Jay's Jay's good, isn't he? I don't I don't really watch him. Um, but he does good work. He's he's he must be a good painter, right? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Right, there we go. Definitely need to sort out his boots. Um, I guess they could be black. Because they're black on here. No, I don't like black. They're going to be brown. There you go. <coughs> Say Mesfica has a resurgence in the area. Friend, etc. is making armies. I got roped in because Nazgul's. Ah, uh, yeah. I wish I liked any models. I genuinely don't. They're terrible. And I'm so annoyed at it. Because it's Lord of the Rings, right? I should like it because of the aesthetic, because of all that, but I don't. Because ultimately, because it's quite grounded and based on the movies, which naturally had to be grounded and could not be crazy, like they could do with animation or models, just a lot of brown on stuff, on normal looking dudes. Yeah, it's not really my thing, to be honest, so. And the scale's too small for me. I don't, you know, nothing stands out. It's all very lame. Uh, finished all the models from the Dead Zone start set. Pretty fast to do with contrast. Oh, that's good. I haven't done that. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. Um, they are... It's very hypocritical of me to be saying that Mespka isn't good enough quality, like model quality wise, when I have actively told people to play Dead Zone. Um, I do understand that. Dead Zone models aren't great, but there's something in them, there's something in that cartoonish. Someone's phoning me. Hold on. Oh, no. Are we back? Yeah. <clears throat> There's something in that cartoonish look of, you know, the heroic scale that, that makes up for a lot of sins, I think, to be honest with you. Whereas, uh, so, uh, I, I was playing Mespico with, with Wes, my friend, and... He, he kept pointing out that uh, some of the faces for Lord of the Rings look like they're uh, blow-up sex dolls. Obviously, they're meant to be doing like a war shout, but yeah, no, they just look like blow-up sex dolls. I was like, uh, yeah, they're really bad. It seems to be they were done at a scale before GW's quality could actually handle it. And yeah, they're not looking good. <clears throat> Lack of detail helps with speed. Yes, it does. Like, 100%. And, you know, Dead Zone stuff is not particularly detailed. It's very... Which is a blessing. And I will say, as much as I like uh, War Machine, they pack in a lot of details, a lot of pouches, you know? It makes things take a long time to paint. And they also have a lot of sharp cuts, so your um, like contrast doesn't flow brilliantly on them. It flows, like the material's good, but just there's so much detail that you're not getting... The beauty of contrast is it, it, it's very forgiving, right? Um, but with so much detail on the models, I'm not really getting much extra free painting done with my brush stroke, if you want to view it that way. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't have... I guess he could be brown-haired. He could be Garagak sewered haired And then I'll just do silver for the... I'll, I'll figure out the armor after that. We're almost there. Oh, I need to do the base as well. Ooh, duh. 
<clears throat> He's still going to be Garagax who ahead. There you go. Um, what are we on? Mes I will cover Mespica's mechanics soon. Just more system and the tournament scene. Underworlds 40k got stuff prepared. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I'm excited for Age of Sigma 4. But I'm just letting my heart sing, you know? I'm just letting it go. I know I won't like this system. I know it won't be a main game for me. But I think Stormcast are cool. And I'm going to enjoy it while I enjoy it. And I know that it will be wasted money in a month's time. But I'm cool with it. It's like, nice. Which is very weird to like, to, to be that open with, you know? To know that I, I actively dislike a thing. And I'm not really a hobby guy, so I'm not buying it just for the models. But I'm going to do it anyway. Things are getting weird up here, let me tell you that. <clears throat> yeah, I like Jay, but he doesn't receive two pounds a month from me. Patreon crew. Patreon crew! Nice. Nice. Well, that money gets put to hard work. Allow me to tell you in the many ways that I have shared your dividends in my life. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, like my biggest expense, which was entirely Patreon funded, was this entire room. Um, on the off chance you don't know, I I live in a, a, a I get it's a one bedroom, but like a studio. So there's the living room and then a bedroom, and the living room is open plan with the kitchen, and I converted the one other room, the bedroom, into this studio. Studio. Um, so yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, then it turned out I didn't like the game I did that for. So fuck me, fuck my life. What can you do, buddy? That's how that's how it is sometimes. That's how it is. That's how it is. And as I'm coming up to moving soon, because I'm being evicted, the question is, am I resetting it up? in the new place. I don't know. I don't know. What a beautiful brown. Oh, oh top notch. This is perfect brown hair color. I was a touch concerned. I, I don't like to use browns because I can't see them. And so normally I'd go, you know, blonde because I like yellow um, or like a, a gray because that always looks quite cool, I think. But oh, what a brown. Absolutely smashing it out, mate. That's beautiful, that is. Garagax sewer for life. You'd love to see it. <clears throat> Big shoulder pads are amazing. Agreed. Never, ever translate well to real life, though. Even World of Warcraft, which obviously in the game format did have big shoulder pads, when they did the movie, which, say what you will about the movie, did look pretty damn good. They were like, Normal size shot of that. Sorry, bro. Mythful Miniatures seem to still be selling their pre-movie Middle-Earth models. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I'll stay away from that. <laughs> My current plan is to go and get some 3D printed uh, models. To be honest, however, I'm a little bit concerned that I'll go and do that. And they, it turns out they only actually look better in the 3D render. And they're still just small and look crap. So we shall see about that. Don't want to waste too much money on this. Uh, to clarify, normally I would just waste loads of money. Uh, that's very normal for me. <laughs> but... As I have to move house soon, uh, money might become a touch of a thing. So, yeah. I would like to avoid wasting money at this point in, in my life. You know. <clears throat> Top tier contrast. 100%. 100%. Those minis were fantastic. Merp. Nice. 
Uh, so, I can show you, do I? I don't have any dice in front of me. I'm in a gaming room and I have no dice. What's going on? Oh no, yeah, no, I got that, Josh. It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I was just telling you how I've already used your money, not trying to convince you to give me some. Yeah. So, uh, the keys to Mesquite are positioning, and the way it works, how do I not have dice? This is ridiculous. I have dice. I need a different colored dice though. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> All right, here's our dice. This person, I'm too zoomed in for this, is attacking this person. There you go, okay. <clears throat> you need to be base to base, okay? The first thing you do is a duel. So a duel is very simple. You roll one dice, I roll one dice. Whoever rolls higher wins the fight. If you draw, you have a secondary number, and that's your fight skill. Whoever has the higher fight skill wins the fight, wins the duel. Um, if you're drawn there, there there's, there's other ways to figure it out. <clears throat> After one of you, let's just say, what, what are we on? Four, three, perfect. So, uh, the, the buck, buckler man wins the fight. That means this model gets pushed back one inch. Okay, that's the first thing that happens. Then, um, you roll against a standard strength table. So if you know old, old World, you know this strength table. It's old school G-dubs. We know how it is. I'll take my dice. Um, let's say I'm strength three. And you are defense, because it's not toughness, it's defense, because you can also have a high defense if you're very agile, like elves. You know how elves are low toughness, but high like agility? They just have high defense. So if I'm strength three, I need to wound, uh, let, let's just say your defense four. That means I need to roll a five. I roll a four. End of fight, nothing happens. Let's say I then roll a five. Not only have I won the duel, I deal damage. Almost everything in the game has one wound, you're dead. That's it, there you go, that's the combat. Super simple. Um, the duel is the dice off, whoever rolls higher wins. And then, as usual, you roll to see who, uh, if you can wound based on the old GW table. However, you then get into a few things. Let's say this guy had a shield. Instead of choosing to attack back and have a standard duel, I could choose to um, defend and I would get to roll two dice. However, if I win the duel, I then don't deal any damage. I win, you get pushed back. I don't get to damage, uh, fight ends. However, you can also gang up on people. So, again, let's say I've got two guys in base to base with you. Cool, I get to roll two dice because they're both attacking compared to your one dice. Uh, there's also other things. So let's say uh, quite often you will have a guy up front who's got a sword. If you have, um, you know, a guy with a pike or a spear, you need to be base to base with this model to be able to support him. So instead of being here, I could be back here and I still get to roll two dice. That's the core of the game. There you go. You now fully understand the core of Mespica. Move around. Support your fighters. Do what you're going to do. Oh dear, I think one of their smaugs somewhere. Have one of their smaugs somewhere. I think my brother gave it to me after his very brief interest in miniatures came to an end. Nice. So, um... Oh, I haven't done it yet. Maybe... No, I can't do it. Until I move house, I cannot build Vargaroth the Scarred, which I should do. 
Right, let's apply. I think I'm going to do null oil. Do if I have null oil. Do I have null oil with me? Yes. So I think now to continue my cobble base, I'm going to apply a null oil um, around all of the black lines. The idea here is that I go a little bit over the lines with the null oil. If this, if, if this was a, if I didn't have time to kill on this stream, this would be the end of the base. Let's be clear on that. Um, oh, no. I need to, uh, what do I need to do with the armor? So guys, I need help. What do I do? This is the model. I could finish this model now and call it a day. The way this model is done here, They've just gone with gold over all of the raised edges, all of the gilting, um, and they've called it done. I'm obviously not doing all of the NMM here. I'm just doing black. Is it even black armor, or is it actually meant to be just a dark silver with then gold? I don't know. Um, do I leave the armor black, or do I make it silver? And then do I do gold? I I actually have no idea. Uh, obviously the sword's going to be silver. That's that's a that's a given. I do like the gold. So guys, you tell me, is this picture is the armor, not the gold bit, the actual armor, is it meant to be black or is it meant to be silver? Because they're called Black Legion, I just assumed the armor was black. But I don't know. Got no clue. Um, and then with this dude, what I could do... Sorry. Is leave the armor black. And just do, like, uh, either silver or gold on the edges. Or I could do the armor silver and then do gold on the edges. Or I could be lazy and just do silver. I like gold... What, what bit silver? Oh, you're talking about what colour this is meant to be. Okay, I understand. Silver armour does make sense. Something here needs to be silver. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Black with a hint of... That feels like a piss take. I'm going to be honest. Kill Team Ken taking advantage of disabled people. Outrageous. Uh, something needs to be silver on here. There's no doubt about that. Kind of green. Josh clearly in league with Kill Team Ken. Outrageous. Outrageous. Burger King. Brilliant addition, Jack. Thank you. Right. Let's do the sword. I know the sword's silver. Uh, do I want a solid silver? No, no, not too much, not too much. Let's not go cray. Although, actually, if the whole of him's going to be silver, what am I doing? Okay. We do a solid silver sword. That's fine. It makes sense. Lovely. Right. Now, I do everything silver. Let's have a think. What am I doing? Am I just painting the whole armor, everything I just did black silver? Am I dry brushing? I actually don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't care. Whatever, dude. Does it? No, no. So this is CO cast, which is 
a resin and um, this has been pretty good so far. I've dropped it before I went on stream. It handled the drop but totally fine. This is good. I have absolutely no issues about uh, this, this material, I would say. You know, like with the War Machine stuff, I've been, they, they are still perfecting that resin, let me tell you. Um, and I'm always quite nervous when I drop it. This stuff, I'd be happy to drop. No concerns, actually. No concerns. No. Hold detail quite nicely. Definitely better than a lot of other resins. Uh, for example, the the Moonstone resin I really didn't like. Really didn't like the Moonstone resin. This stuff infinitely better. So yeah, seems seems good to me. I mean, saying that, you know, I'm, I'm always generally quite careful with my models. So I haven't done anything crazy with it. But, you know, I dropped it uh, onto the carpet and it was fine. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. But that's good enough for me. So that's really all I need from my models for them to be able to survive accidents. I don't need to be able to survive much else. Uh, and yes, Josh, it is relatively intuitive. I agree. Um, that's the absolute core of the game, though. Obviously, there's more to it. But yeah, a simple roll-off is, is pretty... You can't go too far wrong, really. You know, you're not going to confuse too many people with it. So, not too bad. What is the time? 8.30. Well, we're going to be wrapping up soon. Oh. Just as the, the absolute bangers of... of uh, Adeptus Mechanicus start kicking off. Damn. How's everybody's hobbies gone tonight? Have you gotten lots done? I don't know what you're supposed to say in situations like this. I'm painting models. What can I do? What can I do? I've gone from start to almost finish on a model. Pretty good going for me. Um, and despite the fact that nobody will agree with me, I'm well chuffed about my base. Dark Tide Tunes. I hadn't considered it, actually. Hadn't considered it. Is it really better than uh, the Mechanicus soundtrack, though? Mechanicus is a pretty high bar. AKA, it's got bars. Hmm. Well... This definitively needs some cleaning up, I won't, I won't lie. Kitchen sorted. Base looks mint, bud. Major Tom, we're realistic about hobby here, okay? You don't have to say that. Uh, I'm at peace with the fact that I like it. That's good enough for me. Uh, if the rest of the model was also in a cartoon style, that would be better. But it's not, because uh, I, I can't do that. I probably could. I should really try it one day. It just seems like a lot more effort than it's worth, though. For me, personally, I, I think it looks awesome. I really like seeing those um, cell-shaded type models. I like your bases, if you know what I mean. I assume you're talking about the black room drop, yeah. I know exactly what you mean.
Well, I'm almost done. And then I can say I've... One of the first people... The rim of his base is black. That's always like... That's what makes the model. It's what makes everything stand out. Obviously. The black rim drop. What else would I mean? Managed to get base materials down. Only a dry brush and they'd be done. Oh. Well, done in plenty of time. Are you going to have a... Are you guys playing tomorrow? Getting a final game in? I assume you are. You must be. For the uh, shark tank that is... Uh, Andover. Or at least it will be a shark tank next weekend. My gosh. My gosh. Well. Here's the thing. I kind of don't want to... It feels like it's going to be a lot of effort to do all of the... the, um... the gold trim. So I might just not do that. Yeah, I don't know. That, I'm going to put the model to the side. Take it out of these weird studio lights which make everything look different. And, um... See how I feel about it. Because I don't want it to look bad. Or oh, sorry, it, it can look bad. But it has to look bad in the colours I want it to actually be. That's my issue with Hobby. I still want things to look how I want them to look. Whether they look bad or not, irrelevant. Right. Oof. No one oil... See what this does, eh? And then I'm basically done. Uh, and I'm gonna go cry? I don't know, something like that. Just for fun. Just for fun. Right, what's this doing? Let's put it right on the back, see if this does what I think it's gonna do. That does nothing at all. Okay, I need a bit more concentration in that case. Okay, I'm going to say it has no effect, but it might be the lighting. Let's keep going. This is not having the uh, the effect I intended. I can't lie. Um, I thought it was going to be significantly more dramatic than that. I'll sleep on it. I'll see how I feel. I need a darker known oil or something. I don't know what's happened there, to be honest. Great. Uh, now this is where you'd want that known oil gloss, you know? Really known oil up the armor, but uh, as it is, nah. Nah. 
gloss it up. Well, there you go. How about that, everybody? Me proving that I'm a hobby champion. One of the first people in the world, arguably. To paint a war crow model. Truly a hobby champion. That's me. Just couldn't wait. Stunning. Stunning. Well, you've seen it here first, folks. A painted model. Never before seen on this channel. There you go. Well, I need to go clean my brushes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I haven't quite finished my coat. Let's see, can I actually like uh, show it off? In theory, I can. How do I do that? Mm, I guess I just have to show it there. There you go. What's that on his leg? <laughs> Bit of a bold, we all know how that is, mate. Not to worry, not to worry. Yeah, that'll do, he's painted. Probably won't win any awards. I do stress probably. You never know. Uh, and that's a cobblestone base. Which obviously doesn't look amazing. Uh, if you compare it to an actual, you know, cobblestone 3D printed base. But honestly, if that was just on the tabletop, smashed it. Because, I mean, this camera here, no. This one here. This is tabletop distance, you know? You can't see anything. He could be one color, it's mad. Cool, uh, well thanks for watching everybody. This has been Andy. Um, I might be doing next weekend, I'm not sure. Uh, when, when do I get back? Tuesday, Thursday. I get back late Monday, so whether or not I'm going to be back and ready to ready to rock in time for next Tuesday, I don't know. Um, so I might have to miss it. If I'm back and I'm around, I will do another stream. Um, I don't know what I'll paint because obviously I've just perfected this this masterpiece. No further work required. Uh, we shall see. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for staying tuned in, staying in touch, hanging out. Uh, you know, I like to do these streams to just uh, keep in touch with my with my community. Uh, because, yeah, I might not be doing so much Kill Team content anymore. Um, but it would be such a shame to lose those people that I forged bonds with over the past five years. Um, if Even if they're Kill Team only, you know. Cool. Stay gangster. Have fun. See you next week, maybe otherwise.